Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1028. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1028, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we have a drop down here. And we want to select something like this, this text item here and list a table of contents with the cell address and a hyperlink to all the occurrences of this title over on Sheet All. Now, here's the thing. There's 30,000 rows of this dumped in report here. And mixed model analysis happens to be in A5, but it's also the next one is in A620. And there's many other occurrences. In fact, there's 48 of them. And I don't want to have to search through this whole list to find each occurrence of this title here. So I want to do it automatically. I want to find all of the row numbers for this title here and build a hyperlink. Now there's going to be many of them, and I want the first occurrence, second occurrence, third occurrence. So I'm going to type the number 1 and 2. And actually, we want to increment these. So one way to do it is highlight 1 and 2 and point to the fill handle and click and drag. You'll see that will increment numbers, Control Z, Z. We could also hold the Control key. And when my cursor turns to a crosshair over that fill handle, I can click and drag. Notice that plus symbol means that I'm going to increment numbers, Control Z. Still another way to do this is because I have an empty cell here. If I highlight and click and drag, it'll automatically increment. So there I have my 48. So we're going to look up this text in column A, or, or A1 to A35,000. There's going to be many duplicates. Anytime you have a lookup formula with many duplicates, you're going to have to switch over to some sort of array format. So I'm going to use, hey, the small function to start. So we're going to have lots of row numbers. And I want the first row, second row, third row. So we'll use the small. Inside this argument right here, we'll build an array calculation to get find all of the row numbers for that title. I'm going to say if. Now, instead of clicking over here, I'm going to type out my sheet reference. I know the range is A1 to A35,000. I'm going to type all and then an explanation uh, point. That all is the title of the sheet. The explanation point is the syntax which tells the formula, hey, I'm a sheet reference. Now, if you want to be super safe, you could put single apostrophes around the sheet name. The reason you'd want to do that is if you'd ever have the chance of having spaces. You can see over in this sheet name, there's a space there. But here, there are none. Because I'm never going to have spaces there, I'm going to leave it out. And then I'm going to type. A1 colon A35,000. Now, if I hit the F4 key to lock this, it only locks that first one. So I'm going to come over here, touching A1, and hit F4 to lock it. So now we have our dollar signs. Anytime in that range, that anything in that range is equal to A8, F4 key, then what do I want? That's the logical test, and it's going to have a lot of trues and falses. What do I want if it's true? Hey, I want the row number. Now I'm going to highlight this, Control C, Control V. Now we actually do want the row number because we're building an address here. We don't need relative position. In some of my other videos, I talk about building row minus row plus 1. But here, this will work fine because we actually need the row number. We do not need the value of false. We close that off, and a false will automatically be put in. Now I can't click on this and do our old trick F9 to see what the result is because there's too many characters, Control Z. But that array has all of the row numbers for mixed model analysis. We don't want all of them in our formula as we copy the formula down. We just want the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest. So I'm going to come to the end, type a comma, get to that K, and then click on relative cell reference. One, and then as we copy down, we'll go two, three, four. Close parentheses. Now, this has an array operation. There's one array operation there in the if logical test argument. There's also an array operation here. That argument's expecting a single cell. We gave an array of cells there. That's called a function argument array operation. Now, whether or not an array formula requires the special keystroke Control Shift Enter is determined by function arguments. And if you have a, or an array operation on the logical test argument of the if function, the formula requires Control Shift Enter. So I'm going to use Control Shift and Enter. When we use Control Shift Enter, that's us saying calculate this as an array formula. The curly brackets up in the 
formula bar are Excel's way of saying, hey, I calculated an array formula for you. Now I'm going to double click and send this down, and there we have our row numbers. Now this formula here required Control Shift Enter, but if you have Excel 2010 or later, we can not use the small and if, but use the aggregate function. Now I'm going to copy this. This is the conditional array operation, Control CC. Here I'm going to clear all Control C. You notice it loads it up into the clipboard. And then we'll get our rows, Control C. So I have both of those little pieces here, and we'll see an alternative way to get row number. Aggregate is a great function. You have to have Excel 2010 or later. It does all these great functions, but guess what? Only 14 to 19 can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter. So that's why we would consider using this. There's our small. Comma, now in our array operation, we're going to have some errors. So we're going to use options. That's the second argument. We're going to select 6. Comma, and there's that lovely array argument in aggregate that can handle array calculations without using Control Shift Enter. Now here's how we'll construct this. We're doing small, so we're going to take the actual all of the numbers we want. That would give me all that would give me the numbers 1 to 35,000 in an array. But we don't want all of them, so we're going to divide them by our conditional array operation. Boom, I'm going to click on that one right there. Now, what this will give us and we're going to use uh, open parentheses around this because we want to force the equal sign operation to calculate before division. Normally, this would calculate after division. Now, this will give us a bunch of trues and falses. The row, when it's divided by true, will give us the row number. When it's divided by false, it'll give us divide by 0. So that's why we put that 6 there in the option. Now, I can't evaluate this one here either to show you because it's too big. So we type a comma, and there's our k, relative cell reference, close parentheses. Now watch this. I'm going to use Control-Enter, which just puts the formula in the cell and keeps the cell selected, but no curly brackets. Totally cool. So now I can copy this down. And we get our same row numbers without using Control-Shift-Enter. Now we need to use the hyperlink function. So I'm going to use hyperlink. Now, link location usually requires the entire, if you're going to a different sheet, it requires the entire uh, workbook name. And actually, I have a few videos up here. This hyperlink video has all the possible examples that I could think of for hyperlink. There's another aggregate video about small and aggregate. All right, so here's a trick. Instead of using the whole address, I'm going to use double quotes and a pound sign. All right, so that pound sign will allow us to simply put, instead of the whole uh, file name, just the sheet reference. All right, so now I put that in double quotes. I, when I typed that, I didn't say that. Double quotes, because this is going to be text. And we're going to join this to, after we type in A, sheet all, column A, and double quote. And we're going to join it with the ampersand, row 5. Now, right there, we could close this off, Control-Enter, double-click and send it down. you got to be kidding me. Not only does it show us the, the actual cell that that text is in, but when I click on it, it will jump right to that cell. Absolutely beautiful. And if I'm down here, boop, it jumps right to that cell. Just a totally automated way to get that. Now, if you didn't quite like this, if you look at the hyperlink, there's link location. We could get fancy here, right? And I, whatever you wanted to do as a friendly name, comma. So the friendly name, double quotes, Control-V. I pasted that. So now it's got A plus whatever's right there. So then it just shows you A5. And then you could put whatever you want there, right? You could say A5 on the. Uh, all sheet or however you want it. But uh, whatever you type there, it has to have some text. If you're joining it to a cell, use the ampersand. All right, um, let's see if this works. It jumps right to mixed model analysis, 1227. There you go, some hyperlinks to some duplicate titles on another sheet, and then a little bit about getting row numbers with small and aggregate. All right, we'll see you next video.